crumpet. Espresso. Crumpet. Espresso. What's up, everybody? It's the Garlic Bread Warlord, Nick Leafy. And yeah, it's crumpets, espresso, uh, all kinds of fun stuff. Mate. I think Haggis is now involved. Is that right? Is that right, guys? Haggis is involved? I don't know. Who knows? We're going to keep adding stuff, though. At some point, I hope we get the carne asada tacos. That's where I'm really uh, trying to get to. If we can get the carne asada, uh, I will be extraordinarily happy. That's just me personally. I don't know about you guys, but anyway. Uh, let's go ahead and get to some of the stuff that is going on in the great wide world of soccer. And I'm sure everybody's hearing about Chicharito, right? Have we already talked about that? Yeah. Anyway, look. My two cents on this is that this is tremendous for the league. I know that we're trying to get away from the idea of being retirement league, all blah, blah, blah. But guys like what, 31 years old? I mean, I am more than happy with a 31-year-old Chicharito coming into the league because automatically it puts butts in seats. And that is the outside of selling players. That's job one. You got to put butts in seats. You have to have entertaining uh, soccer on field. You have to create buzz. You have to sell shirts. You have to make sure that your brand is front and center. And the LA Galaxy have done that yet again with the Chicharito signing. I mean, was he going to go anywhere but Los Angeles? I mean, really? I mean, that's what happens. These guys, they say, oh, I want a, I want a big-time city with marketing opportunities and whatnot. Well, I'm going to go to Los Angeles. So, yeah, he wasn't going to go to Kansas City. We know this. But uh, let's talk about how big this is. I mean, I mean, honestly, biggest signing since Beckham. I, I've seen a couple of people say that. Yeah, I'll back that up. That's the biggest signing since Beckham. And I... Why? Really? Do we need to go into why? It, it, he's, he's a global star. He is somebody who will, who not only, and everyone keeps talking about the Latino fan base and says, oh, he's going to bring in the Latino fan base. Bump that. There are people who, from a global perspective, will tune in to watch Chicharito play. Uh, white people, black people, Latino, Asian, everyone's going to tune in to watch this guy play. The question is, can Chicharito come through? Will the pressure be too much? Will the eyeballs, the marketing opportunities, will it distract? Will it take away? And frankly, does he have the legs still? Let's be honest. 31 is 31. It's not ancient. But typically, we start seeing players of, uh, of, of an elite level start to lose a little bit of that magic as soon as you cross that 30 barrier. Some of the players still keep it. Some don't. It's a 50-50 toss-up. I think he's going to have it. I know a lot of people who say he won't. I'm just saying I think he's going to be A-OK. So for anybody out there, the LA Derby is now the one to watch. El Trafico, Carlos Vela versus Chicharito. I am 100% saying it is must-see TV. Uh, What do you guys think? Hit us up and let us know. And uh, I know I know you guys are going to be talking about it on soccer down here, and I get it. I don't care. It's not my show. I'm talking about it right now. So let's move on right now to Syria. I posted a link to a story earlier uh, about uh, Antonio Conti and his previous time uh, bouncing around southern Italy, uh, his early management stops, his playing days, and how he went from uh, Lecce to uh, Juve, and then it came in. He came back and he scored a goal against his old hometown club. He now keep in mind he grew up playing for Lecce, and he scored and celebrated, which is just like no, 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 no. You don't do that. Well, since then he has been persona non grata in that town, and you can uh, go to at Nicolifi. And you can find the story uh, on my, my Twitter thread. And I'm telling you it is must read because it factors into what is happening this weekend uh, as Lecce and Inter face each other in Lecce. That's going to be Sunday at 9 a.m. Just tune in and crank the volume up. And I promise you will hear uh, Italian obscenities. Some of the most depraved, horrible things will be aimed uh, at their former man, 
uh, who really, I mean, he really cannot go home. There was a story uh, in the article that I posted about how he did a charity match uh, for Leche, and the Ultras came up and physically threatened violence against him uh, for a charity match. It's no joke. And I'm a big believer that if you are a player who has celebrated against your old home club, that is an absolute no-no. I'm even one of those people who says that if you over-celebrate, for example, like if I played for uh, for Inter and I over-celebrated my goal against Lecce, I probably wouldn't even sign for Lecce. Uh, I wouldn't allow a transfer to go through to that club because I wouldn't want to hear it from the Ultras. I wouldn't want to hear it from the fans. I would just find somewhere else to go. But that, to me, is the must-watch game. Yeah, I know Lecce's nothing to write home about. They're sitting in 17th. Inter sitting at seventh, uh, se- second. Excuse me. But, you know, it's those little... It's the soap opera. Let's just get all on board for the soap opera. The other one is going to be 10th place Milan uh, going against Udinese. That's going to be at 6.30 a.m. on Sunday for all you early risers. I'm just going to go ahead and say that it's the Zlatan show. Can Zlatan... Uh, showcase any of that skill that he uh, that he demonstrated with the LA Galaxy. I I have been vocally against Zlatan going back to Syria and especially going back to Milan. I don't think it's what they need. I think they need to start developing their own blank blank players because there's no way you're going to get out of financial fair play hell until you start getting talent developed and shipped out. That's the fastest way to get your books even. Bringing in Zlatan is setting money on fire if you're not getting to a Champions League spot or a Europa League spot. And I do not think that Milan has the ability to get to a Europa League spot. I, I just, it's just one of those things where it becomes, yeah, you know, it, mathematically could it happen? Sure, you're going to need a metric ton of help. You're sitting in 10th right now with 25 points. The uh, the lowest Europa League spot is going to be Cal- uh, Calgary at uh, 29. You, it could happen, but you're going to need Torino to lose a lot, Parma to lose a lot, Verona, who for some reason has been, I mean, doing A-OK, win- winners of their last two, uh, no losses in their last three. You're asking for sort of a miracle. So for all of us Rosanero fans, uh, you know, it's going to be something where we're going to need some uh, serious support here. But there's something that Zlatan has been bringing to the table for Milan. He's bringing excellent hold-up play, and that's something that has been missing for this Milan side. And and we can go through the laundry list of people they've been trying to trot out up top. Piantek is just it doesn't seem like he's going to be the answer, which is really sad. I had high hopes for that, but Zlatan is bringing intelligent hold up play, meaning that while Milan may not be trying to you know execute a, a, a track star game plan, race down the field. What's happening now that wasn't happening before is they could get the ball up to Zlatan instead of just trying to have it be a foot race. Now Zlatan is finding the key passes outside to make sure the attack stays alive. And that is the key difference between now and then. So am I wrong on Zlatan? Eh, maybe it's kind of looking that way, but I'm not a full endorser of it quite yet. But uh, in the meantime, looking at the table, Juve is still sitting at 1 at 48 points. Enter is at 46 and 2. Lazio flying high. Absolutely. Winners of their last five. Good Lord. Uh, they're sitting uh, in third at 42 points. Atalanta is sitting at 35, who just made the deal for Duvan uh, permanent. I was wondering what was going to be happening with Mr. Duvan, but he is an exciting talent. Uh, he's going to be somebody who uh, a lot of the bigger leagues are going to start wanting to keep an eye on because that guy's unbelievable. Roma sitting at five uh, with 35 points. The losers are their last two. Roma's going to need some help. And don't be shocked if Roma starts kicking the tires on certain MLS talent because they really need help in their midfield. You heard it here first. Don't be shocked by this because the MLS price point is right where Roma is looking. Uh, and then, of course, we talked about uh, Calgary at, uh, at 29 in sixth place. Losers of their last four. But then again... You have Parma sitting in 7th at 28. So typically I don't go that far down the table, but when you're talking about Parma at 28, uh, Torino at 27, Torino has won their last two, Parma won their last game. 
it is easy, easy, easy to jump into that six spot for the seven and eight spots. When you're talking about sitting down at uh, at 25 points, you're talking about the ninth and tenth spot. It becomes very difficult. Napoli still a wreck. Nothing to update there. Uh, Gennaro Gattuso has told the city of Naples to go and start making uh, donations and uh, start praying to uh, to San Gennaro for any sort of help. So. I'll just leave it there. We're asking for divine intervention now for Napoli. La Liga, Barcelona, new manager. They are going to have to start sorting some things out because they are dead even with Real Madrid at 40 points. That's one and two, top of the table. And then you have Atletico at 35, Sevilla at 35. It is a it's a pretty decent La Liga season. If you haven't been paying attention to it, it's it's, you know, there's something there. It's a heck of a lot better than what it used to be where you had the top two teams racing away from everyone else. So I'll take a five-point differential between one and four. I think that's very exciting. So keep that in mind. BN, uh, they, are, they are the spot. BN also just got a hold of the uh, MLS Global Rights. So good for MLS, I suppose. But guys, what is happening in your world that you want to talk about. Are you wanting to talk about transfers? Are you wanting to talk about uh, things that are going on? Hit me up. Let me know. At Nick Leafy, at N-I-C-K-A-L-I-F-F-I, or at Sock over there, S-O-C over there. I'm going to have some video content dropping uh, before too long for you guys. We're definitely trying to make video a bigger part of our network. That's all right. We're doing network stuff now. And that's what we're going to be doing coming up for you all very, very soon. So uh, let us know what you want to see, what you want to talk about. Until then, I've been going for like 11 minutes. Good Lord, it's a Friday. I should be like sipping a beer right now, hanging out. But no, I'm bringing soccer content to you because that's what we do on our show. And we appreciate you all tuning in and listening. But in the meantime, keep in mind, Leche Enter, that is going to be the garlic bread pick of the week just from a soap opera perspective. Take that as you will. Till then, mucha mucha euro, y'all. Crumpet. Time to take a peek at what's going on in England. A couple things off of the pitch to keep an eye on. Darby County has been approached for possible violations of financial fair play. You're only supposed to lose a total of $51 million over a three-year period, and apparently they look like they may have doubled that, but they're trying to roll over things having to do with their stadium construction and things like that, so Darby County might be in another uh, another bit of trouble in the championship. Could be a points deduction, could be a fine. We'll keep an eye on that as well. And we also talked about this morning on uh, Soccer Down Here about how uh, officials in the Premier League now are going to go over to the pitch side monitor to take a look at cards, whether it's a uh, yellow up to a red or a red down to a yellow. Now, let's take a peek at uh, juice boxes when it comes to the matchups on the weekend. You've got uh, Watford and Tottenham, and looking at that right now, a lot of folks might be looking at a draw when it comes to uh, what you're thinking when it comes to that particular go around and uh, you know you know why not it's just you don't know what you're going to be getting with Tottenham especially without Harry Kane Watford under Nigel Pearson really has uh, really shown up and they have rocketed up the table and they are clearly out of the uh, relegation fight at the moment Tottenham though is at plus 120 Arsenal and Sheffield United. Arsenal's at minus 120 on the board. Brighton, one, minus 154 against Aston Villa. That one's interesting. Uh, the draw's at plus 320. Keep an eye on that. Manchester City, minus 1,000 up against Crystal Palace. Not a surprise there. A lot of folks looking at Norwich and Bournemouth and uh, required reading. The article in The Athletic about all of Bournemouth's problems. 85% of their TV money is heading toward wages. And if they were to be relegated, one of the sources said in the article, it could really symbolize and signify the beginning of the downfall of the club. So that's your required reading for today. A lot of folks are looking at Norwich at plus 110 in that one. 
Bournemouth at plus 230. This next month, really, I think is going to determine whether or not Bournemouth stays up in the Premier League. Southampton and uh, Wolves. Southampton is plus 135. Folks are looking at draw on that one with Southampton's foreman with Danny Ings. West Ham and Everton, folks might be looking at a draw there too. Everton at plus 145. Newcastle and Chelsea. Chelsea is at minus 200. Also on the board in uh, Sunday's action, Burnley and Leicester. Leicester at minus 120. And Liverpool minus 275 up against Manchester United. Action in the championship for the weekend. Let's see if there are any real prohibitive favorites or anything like that as we kind of poke our way around and see what we have. On Saturday, Leeds minus 134 up against QPR. A lot of draws on the board as we go down. Brentford minus 138 going up against Huddersfield. And the uh, laundry seems to be ready. Uh, Millwall and Reading. Millwall's at plus 120. That one is for Jess as she keeps an eye on things. Preston North End as they continue to chase the uh, promotion playoffs at minus 188 against Charlton. And uh, Sheffield Wednesday's at minus 134. Swansea minus 110 going up against Wigan, who's hanging out toward the bottom of the table. Wigan's at plus 320. Your Sunday action is at Nottingham Forest at minus 175 going up against Luton with the action uh, already in the barn with Fulham and Middlesbrough. So keep an eye on what you're looking at there when it comes to those. Just for uh, the sake of what's going on, let's take a peek at League One while we're here and see if there's anything that stands out completely with the weekend. Uh, Accrington Stanley at minus 188 against Southend. Portsmouth minus 167 against Bottom, uh, Bolton Wanderers. Uh, a lot of folks are looking at draws. Rather, minus 225 up against Bristol Rovers. And Wickham minus 134 going up against Rochdale. So that's your peek at what's going on juice box wise. As always, choose your juice boxes uh, wisely so you can hang on to the ones that you really, really like. That's it for the look at England. More crumpets and espresso after this. Classic Smorgasbord. Here's your little bit of everything segment, the Classic Smorgasbord, to wrap everything up on some crumpets and espresso. I'm Jason Longshore. This afternoon, just a couple hours ago, word comes down that Ashley Young is headed to enter from Manchester United. Young tweeted to Manchester United. You gave me the chance to play with legends, to win trophies, to work under the greatest manager in history, and to be your captain. Thank you for letting me be part of your story for eight and a half years. Manchester United posted an update on this, and manager Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said, Well, to be fair, I think it was for Ashley. He is 35 in the summer, and if he gets a two-year contract somewhere, I think it's up to him to take that. We weren't ready to offer that. He's been a good servant for the club. He's been captain, and he's won trophies, leagues, cups, but we've got players coming through. So it was time now, then, when Ashley's head and mindset was on, yeah, I want to try this, why not do it now? And Ole went on to talk about they've got options at at outside back. They've got young players coming through. They don't want to, one, get in their way, and also get in... Ashley Young's way. This is a, a player who's given Manchester United everything that you could ask for. So it's the right thing on all accounts. Enter chasing a title, gets a veteran coming in who can help them do that. And Manchester United gets to celebrate a, a player who's given the club everything you could ask for. Uh, Ole said at the end of it, and I think this is a really important thing. You know, good luck. That's what Manchester United do. You have players for a long time and then they move on and someone else steps in. He's done a fantastic job, and he served this club fantastically. I think it was an opportunity for him that we had to say yes to. We got a transfer fee for someone who's been so loyal to the club. Sometimes, silly season ends up working out for the best for everybody. Sometimes. This this is a good story. It's good for Ashley Young, good for Manchester United, good for Enter, get some reinforcements in a very interesting run-in in Serie A. Doing that traditional Scottish favourite, Haggis. Jarrett's not here to bring the Iron Brew today, but I'll bring a little Haggis into the mix for the smorgasbord. Report out of Scotland, just dropping a little while ago. This is out of the Evening Express. 
Major League Soccer's New York Red Bulls interested in Aberdeen's Sam Cosgrove. Sam Cosgrove has been scoring goals for fun for the Dons. Uh, 20 goals. Red Bulls need somebody up top. Bradley Wright Phillips is out on trial with LAFC. They decided not to bring him back. The Red Bulls have a young attacking core that, that actually didn't do bad last year in Brian White and Tom Barlow. You have Matthias Jorgensen, who was kind of eased into things with Red Bulls too last year. But, you know, getting another top young talent sure isn't a bad move if you're the New York Red Bulls. Cosgrove's 23. He's attracted interest from championship sides like Middlesbrough, Leeds, Derby, Hull, Stoke. Now it's understood, according to the Evening Express, that he is being pursued by the New York Red Bulls. Be very, very curious to see what this is going to look like. So, Aberdeen brought Cosgrove in from Carlisle United, 25,000 pounds. They're going to get multi-million dollar deal here for Sam Cosgrove. Are the Red Bulls going to be the ones that get him? Scott McKenna has also been attracting some interest at Aberdeen. He's been a a regular transfer target. There was a lot of thought he might go to England before the Scottish Premiership season started. He's being linked again. Uh, Deadline day, summer of 2018, McKenna had an offer on the table from Aston Villa, 6.5 million pounds. Aberdeen said no. You might get to a point now where the the price is right. And Derek Derek McInnes, the manager at Aberdeen, has told suitors that, look, we know people are interested in McKenna. We know people are interested in Cosgrove. We're not going to wait until the end of the window to make a sale. If they're going to make a move, they want to do it now so they have the opportunity to go in and get a replacement. That's that's key for Aberdeen. They don't have the money to go get the replacement straight up. They're not built that way. So they can't expect McKenna or Cosgrove to go and go sign somebody ahead of that. They have to get the deal done, then go make a signing. So they're not going to wait until the end of the window. And, and that was what McKenna said about the Scott McKenna offer from Aston Villa. He said it was the right deal, quote, but it just wasn't the right time. It gave us a few hours to scramble about. That's not how this is going to go down. So is McKenna going to be a guy who moves? Is Cosgrove going to be a guy who moves? We'll have to wait and see. Keep an eye on Aberdeen over the next few days. They're back in action tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. in the Scottish Cup. Fourth round action. They host Dumbarton at Pataudry. Let's head over to Mexico for week two of the Liga MX Clausura season. Actually got started last night in Ciudad Juarez with a crazy match. 4-4 between Juarez and Pumas. Don't see these kinds of matches very often. It was one of the most exciting games you've seen in Mexico in, in quite a while. Uh, Pumas was down 3-1 in the first half and somehow found their way back to get a point and get it to 4-4 with goals early in the second half. Fabio Alvarez and Carlos Espinola. All right, action tonight. Atletico San Luis hosts Cruz Azul. Atlas hosts Puebla in the late match, 10 o'clock kick. That San Luis Cruz Azul match is at 8 o'clock on Saturday. Monterrey hosting Monarcas, Pachuca hosting Chivas, and Club America hosting Tigres. That's a 10 o'clock game Saturday night. That one is your game in the weekend. Sunday, 1 o'clock, Toluca and Nicaxa get things started. Leandro Gonzalez, Perez, and Cholos, they head to Carretero at 5 o'clock on Sunday. And then the nightcap on Sunday night, Santos Laguna hosting León. That's a really interesting one as well. Santos Laguna lost in week one in Tijuana. They were the top team in the regular season in the Apertura. 
They've already got one loss, and that was coming after a bad playoff loss to Monterey, who ended up going on to win it, but you're talking the one seed versus the eight seed. Now they've got some pressure in facing Leon, who comes in after winning 3-1 in the opening weekend. Big weekend ahead in Mexico. That's going to do it for Crumpets, Espresso, Haggis, Chilaquiles. Maybe we'll get those carne asada tacos that Nick keeps talking about. Maybe that'll happen soon enough. We'll be back on Monday. Soccer over there, live from the Brew House Cafe, 6 to 8 p.m. Come out and join us. Grab a mic. Talk about your team, your league. going to be a lot to talk about this weekend. Some big games in Italy that Nick highlighted for you. A big one in England with Liverpool and Manchester United. The talk going into this is is pretty interesting. Jurgen Klopp is... uh, saying some interesting things about Manchester United and I'll be curious to see what the reaction is uh Manchester United's you know taking points off of Liverpool this season can they do it again huh Uh, stranger things have happened not likely but we will see and I'm sure there'll be plenty of talking points coming out of it no matter what so join us on Monday until then have a great weekend y'all